Now the dust has settled. It is time to give my review on Manchester United's transfer window. Edison Cavani to Manchester United has just been confirmed. Now, before I go and talk about each player and what my thoughts and opinions on the signings, I want to give a bit of context going into the window, um, well before the window, and now the window has finished, all right? And at the end of the video, I'm going to give you my rating to how I think this window has gone for Manchester United, okay? But first things first, going into this transfer window, I identified me, myself, all right? There's five players that we needed, okay? At least a minimum five players, in my opinion, okay? Number one, a priority was a right winger, in my opinion, okay? We just got no depth there. The quality there just isn't there. We've got Dan James, Jesse Lingard, Mason Greenwood plays out on the right. It is not right winger. We all know he's a striker. So for me, that was a priority, along with a centre back. Okay, they were the major two signings we needed. All right, the positions to fill. Okay, then I also had a CDM. Okay, someone to replace Matic because we all know he's getting on. We don't have a really a proper out and out CDM, so I thought that was a position that needed to be fixed, and a, a left back because we all know Luke Shaw's probably not the best. But again, it wasn't a priority. That's why it's number four on my list. But we could do with upgrading Luke Shaw. That is the next position we can go. Yep, yeah, that needs to be filled. And my fifth and final one was a backup striker to Martial. Okay, which the reason why that's number five because. We've got Rashford that can play up top if need be, okay? We've got Mason Greenwood that can play up top if need be, okay? And I know we've got Igalo, but he's going in January, okay? So that's why I've got a replacement as a backup striker. But, but the fifth the fifth and final signing, that's what we needed, all right? Now, let me give you a bit of context going into this transfer window, all right? Last season was a great season for us, okay? It really was, all right? I just want to remind you guys that last season... Our defense was in the top five of all five leagues across Europe, okay? Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. I know it's made out to be fucking shit and shambolic, and it is at times, but last season, we went on a massive run conceding not many goals at all. If you remember, I think we went 19 games with conceding, I can't remember how many goals, it was fuck all, but... I want to remind you guys that last season, we only conceded three fewer goals than Liverpool, the champions, the team that everyone reckons has the best defense, okay? Three fewer goals. So our defense isn't as shit as what people make out to be, okay? But Oli last year never trusted the squad that was outside the top 11, the starting 11, I should say. That's why last year, when it came time for substitutions, he would make him very, very late. And right at the back end of last season, he barely changed the team at all. It was always the same starting 11. I think he did, was it five consecutive games in a row, the last couple games of the season. No trust whatsoever in his starting 11. And what does that tell you? He, he knows the quality is not there. He knows that I can't be bringing that, I can't be starting the likes of Dan James and Jesse Lingard and me getting wins. He knew this. The back end of last season, we looked exhausted. We did. That same starting 11, week in, week out, for the last, I think it was the last, last six weeks, the players looked knackered. With all those games in such little time, there's a reason why we bombed out of Europe so quickly at the back end of the season. We capitulated to Chelsea in the semi final of the FA Cup. We scraped over the line to Leicester and Chelsea for the Champions League spots in the Premier League. Literally, we would not have never made top four if Chelsea and Leicester weren't as shit as us. Honestly, we, we fucking snuck into that Champions League spot. But all in all, we made it. Two semi-finals <clears throat> last year, and we made top four. For me, that's a massive success, considering the players we had. Now is the time to make these signings all right, freshen up the squad to have a bigger squad now because we've got Champions League. All right, so it's got harder games coming our way. And now that we've got Champions League, surely the attraction to join Manchester United is even greater than ever. 
All right, so going into this transfer window, we all had our hopes high. We all thought this is the window that's gonna take us to the next level. That's gonna cement us into the top four, year in, year out. And hopefully, fuck, we can have a good cup run in the Champions League, who knows? But I'm gonna keep it positive, all right? But also, I'm gonna keep it real. I'm gonna keep it 100 with you guys, all right? I'm gonna be non-biased and rate this transfer window, okay? How we came about to transfer deadline day and how we dealt with the signings was a fucking embarrassment. Just the way we handled everything, we just panicked. It was panic buys left, right, and center. Like I said, number one I identified was a right winger. We got no Jaden Sancho. Never happened, okay? Which is fucking frustrating as a United fan. All right, but what doesn't make sense to me is we sign Ahmad Dalio, which I'm not going to bullshit to you and tell I know everything about him because I fucking don't. And I won't be surprised if you don't know much about him either before we signed him because that's there's a reason for that. That's because he has only played three games for Atalanta seniors and we've paid 19 million for the lad. To me, that screams panic, okay? Because I'm not going to compare him to Jaden Sancho. Because Jaden Sancho, even though they're similar ages, Jaden's 20, this kid's 18. All right, Jaden Sancho is proven. He, 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 we've seen him do it on an international level. We've seen we, we on the Champions League, one of the biggest stages you can get. Proven. But yet we don't want to pay the 120, but we're happy to pay the, the 20 million to a kid that's only played three senior games. And, and this is the thing too. If we had assigned him at the start of the window... I would think, fuck, our scouts have done their job. We want this kid. We've identified him. He's going to be a talent. We're going to get him. When you were signing him on transfer deadline day and a few hours to go, to me, that screams panic. And same as um, Frocundo Palstri. Again, no one's really heard of him. He's an 18-year-old kid who should be nowhere near the starting eleven. But he's going to be thrust into the limelight. He's going to be thrust into the first team. And it's going to be a single sim situation for him. And I feel sorry for him. That's not the way to bleed in these young kids. But unfortunately, that's just the way it's going to be going forward. Which is, it just screams panic to me. I don't know. I fuck it. The way we dealt with that was fucking terrible. Again, number two, we identified a center back. Okay. Fuck, we signed nobody. We were linked to Upper Makano for a day or two. And then we were linked for a day or two for Koulibaly. Never going to happen. And, and there was no rumblings of any other center halves. And it never happened. And that was the one area that I thought for sure, for sure we needed. Never happened. Third signing was a, a, a central defensive midfielder. Again, didn't happen. But we did sign Donny van der Beek. Even though he's not a C CDM. He's a good midfielder. And that right there is probably, for me, the best player that we signed in this transfer window. It was a great bit of business. This was the one transfer I thought, well done, Manchester United. You've done well here. But again, it doesn't really improve the first team. We've got Pogba. We've got Bruno in the same role. Quality backup, but it doesn't enhance the first team. But the way we went about it, I was happy with that. I'm not going to complain. Good signing. Any other team would be happy with Donny van der Beek in their t the squad. And the way he started in the league too, he looks like a good player. All right. All right, down our left back. We got Alex Telles. All right. He looks good on FIFA, but for me, it's a wait and see. Okay. He had a year at Inter Milan. Didn't do too well there. Went back to Portugal, played for Porto, and seems to be doing well. So I'm not going to shit on him, but I'm not going to come out and say, you know, he's the next Alexandro. He's going to be amazing. He's going to be good. For me, it's a wait and see, okay? Again, we just... <laughs> this one wasn't panicking, but it was... We haggled and haggled and haggled. I haggled for a man that was in his last year of his contract. It should have been... Done and dusted, sign him off, get him in the club if you really want him. It didn't seem that whatsoever. And the fifth and final signing I said that we needed was a backup striker. And we got that in Cavani. But if you had asked me at the start of the window, would you take Cavani? I would have said to you, no, nah, no way. Not at his age, not at the wage demands he's going to be wanting. Yet we did it. He was a free agent. 
£200,000 a week on a two-year deal. Why are we offering him a two-year deal? Makes no sense to me. It just frustrates the hell out of me. Look, I hope he does well for Manchester United. Why are we... He's a free agent. PSG delisted him, okay? Why are we signing him on transfer deadline day? Wouldn't he be... If you were interested in a backup striker, wouldn't you have got that done way earlier? And at the age of 33, I would have said, look, we're going to offer you a one-year deal and we'll trigger a second year if you can play X amount of games and you can play and you score an X amount of goals. It's going to give him incentive to do well. We've just given him a fat contract for two years. If he does an ACL, we're fucked. It just screams panic. Panic, panic, panic. And why have we given him the number seven shirt? Look, that's another video. In fact, that's a video is going to come out tomorrow. I'm going to make a video about Cavani and all the other signings. But yeah, that's coming out tomorrow. But all in all, lads and lasses, this transfer window for me as a Manchester United fan was piss poor. I'm giving it a three out of ten. We qualified for the Champions League. We had a great season last year. We looked tired. It was time to refresh the squad. It was time <clears throat> to show intent. It was time to show, look, we're here. We mean business. But we show no ambition whatsoever. Piss poor. Three out of ten. Look, I hope every single one of these new signings do well. And I hope everyone can prove me wrong. I hope from 12 months now, I look back at this video, I thought, Jesus, Curtis, you got this completely wrong. It was a great window. But I just doubt it. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. I wish you nothing but the best. I'm very grateful and uh, love the support you guys give me. My name is Curto. Take care and peace.